A big part of being a good genealogist is knowing how to evaluate information and evidence. So before I talk about the different types of genealogical sources that are available for research, I want to share with you a few principles for evaluation so you can keep these in mind moving forward. Think of each of your ancestors as a mystery you need to solve, and each source you locate related to that person is one piece of the puzzle as you build your case. Each source you add to your case is evidence you have evaluated and deemed relevant to your research question and ancestor, and that evidence strengthens your proof. So the more resources you find, the better. When you're doing genealogy research, you're constantly evaluating. Is this source related to my ancestor? Is the information reliable? How does the information compare to the other information I've found about this person? In fact, the whole process of genealogy begins and then continues with evaluation. You start out by asking yourself, what do I have and what do I know? After that evaluation, you consider what information you need to seek next and where to find that information. You then evaluate the sources of the information that you're going to seek to determine their credibility. Not all sources are created equally. Some carry more weight than others and some need to be evaluated with a more critical eye than others. There are a few distinctions that will help you make those evaluations. The first is that a source is either an original or a derivative. An original source is usually recorded at or around the time of the event being documented and is the first written record made of that event. An original source has witnesses that were either participants in the event or had direct knowledge of it. So while an original source is the first record created documenting the details of an event for the first time, a derivative source is created using information from another source or multiple other sources after that initial documentation took place. The information is derived from another source, which itself could be an original or another derivative source. An example of a derivative source would be a marriage index. The information provided in a marriage index is extracted from the marriage certificate, which is the original source of information. A derivative source relies on information from other sources, meaning there's more room for error within these types of records. The further removed information becomes from its original source, the more opportunity there is for potential error. Due to the higher risk for error, derivative sources are more prone to inaccuracies than original sources and should be evaluated with that in mind. With a derivative record, you can't be sure if the reiterated information extracted from another source was accurately or completely transcribed, or if there was a typo made while writing the abstract or some other type of user error. Which is why it's a rule of thumb in genealogy to always seek the original source if you can. The most ideal genealogical source is an original record with primary information providing direct evidence of the information you seek. That isn't to say that original sources don't contain errors, of course. You could come across an original death certificate that incorrectly names the father of the deceased, but that error would have been made by the informant for the death certificate, the person who supplied the information for the deceased. In this case, the error was made by the informant who believed that the information was true, even though it was not. In fact, it's not uncommon to see this on death certificates because the informant may be under emotional distress, having lost a loved one, or perhaps the informant makes an honest mistake about where the deceased mother was born, for example. This is why not only do we need to evaluate the format and origination of the source, but we also need to evaluate the information contained within the source and where it came from. The information within a source is either primary information or secondary information, and that's how you should start training your mind to evaluate genealogical information. Just like original sources, primary information is usually documented at or near the time of the event and is given by someone who was an active participant or witness to the event being described while secondary information is information provided by someone who was not directly involved in the event. 
though primary information is usually found in original sources and most derivative sources are made up of secondary information, that's not to say that one source can't have both primary and secondary information. An original death certificate can have both primary and secondary information, for example. The primary information is the death information provided by someone who was actively associated with the event of the death and had first-hand knowledge of it, including the date and cause of death and the name of the hospital, for example. And the secondary information could be the birth information provided by the informant. Let's say the informant was a family friend who had not been present at the birth of the deceased. So that information that he provided is not considered primary information. That would be considered secondary because the informant would have learned this information from someone else, not from experiencing the event themselves. Just like derivative sources, secondary information is at a higher risk of inaccuracies and mistakes because once again, the information is becoming further removed from the original source. So while it's important to evaluate derivative and secondary sources accordingly, it's also important to remember that even original sources and primary information can have inaccurate information as well. It's just not as likely. That's why we accumulate as many genealogical sources as possible as evidence to prove our case. Each fact within each source either adds credibility to your case, if all the names, dates, and locations line up, or if it's contradictory evidence, then it provides an opportunity to reconcile the differences and evaluate the sources to determine which is the more likely of the two. Let's say you're evaluating the birth date of an ancestor using a birth certificate, a death certificate, and a few census records. All of them are original records. The birth certificate has primary information with direct evidence and is most likely to have the most accurate birth date and location, while the death certificate and the census records are more likely to contain secondary information about the birth and are therefore considered to be less reliable than an original source with primary information in this situation. Direct evidence is stronger than indirect evidence because direct evidence plainly states the information as fact, while information extracted from indirect evidence is inferred. An example of that would be a World War II draft registration card that names your ancestor's wife as the person who will always know his address but their relationship is inferred on this record. It does not explicitly state that they are husband and wife. This is when you can use this type of a record, this draft registration card, to correlate it with other evidence and then prove their relationship that way. I'll do a more detailed video on how to analyze and correlate genealogical sources to determine if they relate to your ancestor. But for now, as you're writing your first research plan and preparing to list out the genealogical sources that you'll be seeking in order to answer your research question, I want you to have these guidelines that you can use as a reference so that you're better equipped to evaluate them and their relevance to your research. At this stage, when you're evaluating sources that you're thinking of including in your research plan, some of the questions that you might consider are, who created this record, who provided the information for the record, when and where was it created, why was it created, how reliable is the information, how was the information recorded, how was the record preserved, is the record part of a series, are there any other records that are associated with the record. Like I mentioned earlier, it's good to start training your mind to filter genealogical sources this way original versus derivative, primary information versus secondary information, and direct evidence versus indirect evidence. Continually evaluating your genealogy research carefully throughout the process will ensure more efficient research strategies and more accurate research results, saving you time while building a solid foundation for your family tree. On Friday, I'll go over what types of genealogical sources exist, how to identify which ones relate to your research question, and I'll outline which ones are sort of standard records that you'll want to seek out for each of your ancestors. 
And so my name is Nicole Conti at Family's Legacy. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with more on Friday.